because one of the things I get asked the most is how do you thin, how do you know what trees to cut, how do you know which rows to follow. How do you make the rows? This here is not a very easy place to kind of explain those type of things. As you can see that right there, I and mean, it's just a wall of crap <laughs> they put us back in a in a bad spot and this is one of the tracks that we had started back in December uh, and it got wet on us and we had to pull out and now we're back it's, it's I think we ought to be working on something else because this ground's really dry we ought to be something a little more marginal but anyway the rows are planted, or the timber is planted in rows, just like a cornfield is planted in rows. Try and walk over here as I'm talking. Maybe get down here where we can watch the skitter work from the side. So the bushes aren't that bad here, the underbrush isn't. It just has what's called a bunch of seeded in timber. Seeded in. See this here is a, a well dominant tree. Yes, it's skint. It's a turn tree. And there's another couple of well dominant trees standing there. And you see the this little bitty thing standing right there? No, that doesn't, that's not a merchantable tree. But they did not plant that. They may have accidentally planted that there. Can't tell you that 100 percent for sure. Most of the time when you get that there. It is not uh, been planted there. So this is growing. It's you can kind of see the tops over there. Those trees fall off a little bit. There's a uh, back this way is a creek bottom, slough, swamp bottom, whatever you want to call it. So there's big timber standing over there. There was a big stand of pine standing across the road from the track that we're cutting, and Whenever, most special like this here is on the this is on the yeah this is on the south side I had to think there for a second get my direction straight this is somewhat on the south side of the uh, bit that would, would have been a big stand of timber years ago and it we get our big winds and stuff down here in the south in the, in the winter time and they come out of the north and it blows all of the seedlings and everything like that out of the pine trees across the roads and it you know it naturally regenerates itself and that's what we call seeding in when it seeds in seeded in stuff makes the rows almost impossible to follow and they also do I'm not sure they do this everywhere it's just here or what what they call contour planting Kind of makes things more difficult. 
especially when you're thinning, it's it's uh it makes it hard to follow and see what you're doing. Now you avoid it the rubber tire, I'm sure y'all heard it just fire back up. We'll stand here and watch it from the side. As he was down on the ground trying to walk and find his road. I don't always get out and walk and find a row. I just, if I lose a row, I lose a row and I just keep my distance, which you want to keep about 35 to 40 feet of timber in between you and the last row and roll with it. All right, I had to turn the microphone around. The mosquitoes are horrible down in there, by the way. But anyway, so the rows are, as I was saying, the rows are planted, or the trees are planted in rows, just like a cornfield. You can kind of see a little bit better here how, how this is. And you can see there's one tree, two trees, you know, just the trees are planted in rows. And they're most of the time 10 foot wide, but sometimes they like that right here. You can see it's a little bit tight. Skitter bumped the tree there because it's tight. My machines are dueled out year round because of the ground that we work all the time. So you're looking at. I love listening to that saw cut, but anyway, you're you're looking at this machine being they're basically 16 feet wide and you're trying to shove it down an 18 to 20 foot row the things get tight but anyway he's going ahead of me during the summertime this is how I'll, I'll show I'll explain what we're doing now how we're working it now and this is the more conventional way of doing things um, most people don't have track machines and thinning but we do most everybody in the Louis in the state of Louisiana, the southern part of Louisiana, south central kind of area of Louisiana, we have track machines. Um, how to get y'all readjusted here? But anyway, the what way we primarily work this down here is we'll have the rubber tire running ahead of us cutting the down row like I stated the rows are the, the trees are planted in rows so he's just trying to follow these rows or he makes a a, a lane 18 to 20 feet wide on his own if he can't follow the rows you know if the rows aren't aren't planted clear or they go to running really crazy we don't follow them no more we just punch straight lines is what we try to do but uh he'll he'll come down through here making this row you're not following any paint any flagging it's all operator select the operator selects the trees to the you know where to run the rows how to access those rows um, the operator is also doing a complete sel operator select thin. Check this out. Oh yeah. Hang on. You don't know what those are? Those are muscadines. Some people call them musky dines. They're actually supposed to be pronounced muscadine I believe I may be wrong hell who knows anyway they're green right now some of these will stay green just get kind of soft like a grape and some of them will turn purple they may be already purple whenever they get on the vine I'm not I know there's two brand versions of them one's green one's purple the purple are better it's like, basically it's like a grape though just a little more tart to it Ooh, y'all talk about good. You can find them out here, most especially in these swamp bottoms. 
you get up against a, a, a creek bottom or something like this it stays wet a lot really good eating <laughs> a good snack to find in the woods but anyway uh, so like I said as he gets the road knocked out he's choosing how to lay it out all on his own there's nobody flagging anything or marking anything there's no kind of markings in any way ahead of the the uh, cutter so he'll get the road punched out and the skitter come out of him and you can see there's no wood on this row and I'm pretty sure most everybody that thins does it like this whether they have trap machines or not they'll cut the down rows and then they'll come back uh, they'll cut some down rows and then they'll come back and thin like my, my rubber tire there he's new and he's learning he's getting where he does a good job with the machine but you know he'll cut depending on how bad the wood like whenever it's really thick like this on the ground and it's slowing him down laying his down rows out um i want to step over there but i know just as soon as i step over there he's going to be coming out because we're right here at the end of these rows but if it's taking him a long time or you know it's slowing him down a bunch to cut a row i'll uh the, i'll stay up pretty pretty close to him but if the rows are planted super perfect super straight there's no deviations to anything there's no bushes and stuff it's nothing for a rubber tire guy to just walk off from a track machine in a in a good situation so i'll uh i keep dragging this out i'm sorry y'all that's just how i tell stories but anyway we'll uh we'll get a few down rows ahead and you know if he goes to getting a whole bunch ahead of me he'll fall back and help me thin the last head for he threw that down but he'll fall back and help me thin but for the most part uh track shear on my job does all of the cutting And then uh, I hear the skitter coming back. We'll go over here, try and watch. I don't know if he's coming to this row or he's going back to one of his thinning rows. But anyway, the uh, we'll get some rows cut ahead, and we're working down row wood in with our thinning wood. And then whenever I come up behind him, I'm looking. All right, we got you zoomed out. All right, so you got this tree here. That's a nice big tree. And then you got this tree here. It's a little bit smaller. And then you got two more nice trees and then another little small tree down there. Down there. You, What you're trying to do is open these tops up to where there's, you see how they're all clustered up and clumped up? You're trying to open the tops up, looking up through the roof. My, my roof has a, a window in it. But you're trying to look up through the through the thinning window. And like myself, you know, this is what I would be looking at while I'm working. So I'm going to be looking for like this tree here. You see how it's smaller than the other two beside it. And that's going to kind of open that up some. Same thing with the next one down here. I'd probably take this tree and this tree just because one... This tree's kind of stuck out to itself. This one here, it's kind of stuck out to itself. So that it, it's in danger of being hit. But then you got to factor in, are you, I'm not sure, yeah, you can see good here. I'm trying to do this in the sun on the screen and it's, it's different. So I'm not sure exactly what all I'm getting, but I think I'm getting a good idea for y'all. But you see how that tree there, to me, this tree, it's the last tree, then there's a big skip spot where there's a bunch of just hardwoods and stuff growing. The timber didn't, it died there. So, to get your basal area correct, you'll have to leave that tree, even though it's gonna crowd this tree still. So, in reality, you'd wanna leave that big tree there, but you're gonna have to take this tree and this tree to get your tops opened up good enough and that small tree stuck out to itself down there to get your tops opened up and everything like that and then something else you have to be looking for is like this tree here 
it's it is a you know if you was just thinning off the ground that's a nice tree but then you look up man look at that fork the company don't want that left there you might could squeeze a small log out of that one day i'm pretty sure that's knocking that's probably close to 20 feet our mill will take logs as short as 17 feet if i was cutting logs but you're risking that fork that you know one of these big well, especially those big forks like that you're risking that fork blowing out in a big windstorm because when you open this up the wind's going to start coming through it more easy and then whenever the wind starts coming through it more easy your trees are more prone to wind damage so that tree's got to come out this tree i mean even though it's a good i mean that's a good 10 inch butt tree already that tree's got to come out same thing with this tree right here beside it it forks right off the butt you see it's two trees off of one butt that one's coming out this one's coming out that little piece thing right there is going to get knocked down this other little one right here it's going to get cut um you know just depending on how how things are looking and laying uh that tree right there in the middle that kind of bows out a little bit that one's coming out those two forks or can't, you can't really tell it from here but that tree right there it goes into one stump that tree's coming out um probably gonna leave these two here just because they're you know they're good well growing dominant trees and you get that junk out of the middle it's gonna have room to grow uh the next tree right here this one it will probably stay you see, like this tree here the one that's skint you see how it it sticks out from the big tree here for whatever reason whenever they were planting it whether it was with a machine or by hand they deviated over a little bit and I mean, that tree needs to come out regardless because you see how well established this tree is and how this tree is what they call suppressed this tree is never going to be anything more than a piece of pulp wood it may make a small piece of chipping saw in the final clear cut but that tree is trying to compete with this tree and this tree is you know well established you need to go ahead and get this junk out and let this tree flourish um it, it's thinning timber is just like harvesting any other crop um except instead of going through and picking you know like when you're picking watermelons or whatever you're looking for the big watermelons that are ripe and ready to go right then thin in timber you're looking for the stuff that is little that is not going to make it that is going to like like this tree right here this little one right here you see how suppressed the top is in it already if you left that tree there before you come back to second thin it it would be dead You'll make money off of that. You'll make a few dollars off of that tree right now. But five years from now, that tree will be dead. That's money wasted. Uh, so, you know, you're harvesting the timber, but you're harvesting it in reverse of what you would normally be doing a crop. You know, you're going in a crop normally looking for the things that are already ripe and well and big. Uh, if you took the big trees out now, yeah these littler ones like that one there and whatnot they would survive and they would grow but they're not going to make you the saw logs and the poles that you're looking for at a final fell of 28 years old that's what our timber down here averages is 28 years of age this stuff here is this stuff is uh, 13 yeah 13 years old 14 years old so it'll stand here for another this will stand for probably seven more years and then it'll be second thin and you know taking more of the smaller chip and saw type timber but it'll be sold as pulp wood um, and there's just not a really big chip and saw market in my area so it'll be blend this track it was called blended and the small chip and saw that comes out will be sold as pulp wood and you know like this right here there's another fork if you're paying attention when you're cutting 
I'm going to get this tree. I'm going to get this fork whenever I'm thinning because I'm taking this one and this one regardless without even looking at the tops just because of how clustered it is on the ground. Uh, start making my way back to my machine. But I'm going to take those trees regardless because it's, it's clustered on the ground. And... Uh, If you don't, you know, if you don't take these like this one here, if you don't take this little one, it's going to compete with your bigger trees. It's going to pull nutrients from the ground that your big tree needs. Uh, like, like I was saying, you could leave them, you could reverse thin it, so to speak, and put you, you know, take your big trees now, but there's no point in doing that. Uh, we're trying to grow saw logs and mo mostly saw logs is what we're shooting for here. The pole market just isn't what it used to be in my area years ago. Years ago they would, we had a bunch of, which we still have a bunch of slash timber standing. This is loblolly. Loblolly don't grow as tall or as straight. It just grows fat and fast uh, where slash grows a little bit slower straighter and taller it's it's more for uh, poles and when the pole market was big they were uh, they would they would purposely leave the timber thicker and thin it in different methods to make the poles grow but uh so that's that's kind of a basic little rundown right there with the thinning it's 100 percent operator select you're looking for you know like that tree right there you want to leave that tree that tree right there that's got that big old nasty looking fork i mean that's a really pretty buddy tree you know it's big but it's forking it's most especially that one there that big fork it might would withstand some wind but for the most part that tree is going to die because it's going to blow the big fork out of it and when it exposes that half of the tree bugs will get it and it'll die so it's just all about managing the timber it's you know you're not just out here just cutting stuff you're managing a renewable resource and uh it's uh it's more to it than just cutting trees especially with thinning when you know clear cutting you're just cutting you know you're just mowing everything down the magic is done on the set in the set on the landing in the deck however you want to call it um all the magic there is done when it comes to merchandising the timber that you have harvested uh, this this here let me step behind my machine and I'll kind of show y'all what it looks like on one side well both sides I've thin both sides already on this but um, you know it's it's up to the cutter men in a thinning application as to how well a stand of timber is going to grow and do and everything like that so Here's some examples of, and y'all are seeing all the junk. Actually, you can look over the top of my machine, see how thick that is, and all the junk. You know, like that little tree there that's left, and that one's real clustered up. There's some more clustered up ones there. You see, like there's that one cluster, I gotta say cluster, that one tree right there is a little bit tight on that big tree. But they're both well dominant trees this closest one to us is a little bit more dominant but there i had a hole in the middle where we cut a whole bunch of the trash out so i left some on the outside to kind of you know pull your basal area back up and you see we got a bunch of trash off the outside and then there's two in the middle but you can just see how opened up the tops are 
and you know, like this right here there's three big trees right there in a row but there's an open spot there you know there's an open spot there like all that over there I haven't got to yet you can see how it's still thick but you can see looking looking at your tops here and then looking back through your tops over there how open everything is your timber is just gonna it's like adding gas to a fire right now this stuff for sure in the next five years is going to take off and grow so fast it'll blow your mind but I mean you see everything that's left standing is uh, I mean some people would be cutting chipping saw out of this already if you was cutting five inch chipping saw like that bigger one over there kind of on the inside that bigger one that's chipping saw already this biggest one standing close to us that's a piece of chipping saw um, this bigger one standing right there you'd probably get a piece of chipping saw out of that same thing with this one right here that's probably a piece of chipping saw standing there same thing with the next one to it um, but you can see that what I have left is well dominant well sustained and growing timber and it's gonna take off and it's gonna make you know it's gonna make somebody money one day but anyway that is a big old machine uh, give y'all a good size reference like I said those rows are about 20 feet wide and you can see just how kind of brighten it up a little bit so it's a little bit easier for y'all to see you can see just how wide that is there how much room is there it's about three feet on that side and there's about six feet on this other side so and the skitter is that thing's like 12 feet wide so the skitter is another four foot wider five foot wider no yeah yeah skitter is about 16 feet wide so it's about four foot wider than the track machine but anyway I've got to get back to work hopefully that kind of let y'all understand some of the thinning and uh, in case y'all didn't know it today's the first day of summer and it's hot fellas it's hot so like I said hopefully that kind of answers some of y'all's questions I'll, uh, I'll try to keep this video linked up in the cards and stuff on all the future videos so new subscribers will see it and watch it and kind of understand what we're doing here but quick rundown basically when you're first thinning you're cutting your own rows there's there's no uh you, know, you don't leave the bad trees and go around them and stuff like that you cut whatever's standing in front of you you make you a 20 foot wide row there's going to be about 35 to 40 feet of timber left standing in between the the rows the track machine does all of the thinning. The rubber tire helps do some thinning as well. Uh, you're leaving about 250 stems an acre. It's, it's, it's still quite a bit of trees on the ground and it'll stand for another five to seven years. And it'll be second thinned again or it'll be second thinned not again it'll be second thinned and uh, then it'll stand to the age of 28 years at least and then it'll be clear cut but you're just you're riding through even when you're doing your thinning you're you're riding through doing operator select thinning just removing all of the forked trees smaller trees you know anything that's kind of suppressed looking uh, here's a good example I see something over here point this out real quick y'all see how that tree right there has a fork in it but you see how the fork is small and it's way like it's way up top that tree is probably a hundred foot from us 150 foot from us but you see how small that fork is that fork is gonna make it through wind storms and stuff so that's why it's it's left there sometimes you gotta leave a little bit of forks but anyway hope y'all enjoyed this 
Hope it answered some questions. Uh, should be pretty good response on it. Any more questions, leave them in the comments below. Uh, appreciate all the views. Uh, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Make sure you got the bell click to get notified when we actually post videos. I'm trying to start backing my time up. I, were post I was posting videos about 11 a.m. Central Time every morning. I'm trying to now post them more around 8.30, 8, you know, 8, 8.30 in the morning. Uh, they seem to be doing a little bit better that time frame of day. So, anyway, thank y'all for watching. Y'all have a good one. We'll see y'all next time.